Okay, so resuming. Um, so we usually start off at, at this website called DigiKey. Um, and um, the reason why we use it is because it's got simply, at this point in time, the best uh, parameterized part searcher out there. So, for example, let's suppose that you want a uh, resistor. It will basically, oh, we should probably erase that stuff over here. Would you, Frank, would you be willing to donate your hand to the erasing again? No. Oh, John's going to do it. Okay. So you type in resistor, and it gives you a lot of options. Um, but usually we just scroll down until we get to the, uh, the big, long list of them. Okay. Um, where are they? So here we are, resistors. And maybe I can make that a little larger. Yeah, let's make that a little larger so people can see. Um, and so uh, you can see that I've been here before. I am interested in chip resistors. So you'll notice that there are 306,000 <laughs> uh, chip resistors to choose from. Okay. So. I usually, at some point in time, I click in stock just to keep things uh, uh, better. That'll, that'll, that'll trim it down to a mere 142,000. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, it's going to make me do it again. So let's go to chip resistors. There we go. And then it will give me this. Now, unfortunately, this is a very small display, so I have to scroll across. But basically, these are the parameters you can choose from across. Okay. And there's a lot to choose from. Okay. So what we do is almost immediately we decide that we're going to want either cut tape or a reel. Okay. So cut tape is here. Okay, and what this means is you're buying a small number of them, and the vendor will take out a, out a, a roll of this stuff and cut off just enough of the values that you need. Okay, if you want, you can get a reel of them. Okay, and then you usually either do tape and reel or digital reel. Okay, uh, digital reel is a trade name of DigiKeys, um, and um, you know, it's going to be a while before you're going into reels. So let's, let's just go with cut tape. So now we've cut it down to 36,000 parts. So the next thing you do on, when you're doing resistors is you decide what kind of resistor you want. Okay, so I'm going to go for one of the most simple resistors there is out there, the, the, the good old-fashioned 10K resistor, which is 10,000 ohms. So there it is. And then we have to hit the apply button. This works a lot better on a, uh, a bigger screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need to find the apply button. Come on, where's the apply button? There it is. We apply the filters. And then, now we only have 326 different kinds of 10K <laughs> surface mount re resistors. Okay. So the next thing we do is we, we want to go decide on something else to sort of narrow it down some more, okay? Now, I usually go over to package, okay? And this is where some of the surface mount stuff comes into play. You've got to know some of these terms, okay? And one of the most common terms is right here, these sizes here. You'll see it 0201, 0402, 0603, 0805, okay. Um, those are the size of the resistor in thousandths of an inch. So I use 0603s. Those are six thousandths of an inch by three thousandths of an inch in size, okay. And uh, some people go down to 0402. Those are very small, okay. And the 
your cell phone is using the O201s, okay, which are smaller still. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So we do that. And we scroll down a little to where the apply filters are. And now we're down to a mere 63 <laughs> components. Okay. Um, at some point in time, you say, I've had enough, okay? And you, you haven't seen what's coming, what's down below here. This is the list of all the parts. Now, I have, I'm going to have to make this a little bit smaller to make it so there's a little more we can see. And this lists all of the various parts. And you'll see a picture over here on the left. And most of these things are kind of flattish, okay? Um, <coughs> the, uh, we probably want to have... Um, a fairly low wattage uh, resistor here in this particular case. What I usually do after I get about 63 is I go to the cost, which they moved. Okay. It used to be always on, on, on the right. There it is. Now, that, why didn't they do the, that 10 years ago? Okay. Anyhow. Um, and you can sort them in sort order. And then these are the cheap ones. Okay? So, and you'll notice the price is pretty low. Okay? That's two cents each. The other thing you want to do is look at availability. Okay? Now, sometimes what you'll do is you'll get something which says the minimum quantity is 10 or 100 or 1,000. You probably don't want to buy a thousand if you're, if you're not expecting to do so. So anyhow, let's go click on this, and this will bring us to the resistor. There's the picture, okay, and the key thing here is the data sheet, okay. So you click on the data sheet, and then you can read on it. I'm not going to do that right now. I just want to show you that this is where you get data sheets. Data sheets are important because they tell you how the electrical characteristics of the device. Um, after you've done that, you sort of hang on to that part number, and you can use it. So now, I is, want to go... Is it a standard part number across? Oh, no. Oh, no. Part numbers. I mean, there's manufacturing part numbers, and then there's distributor part numbers, and they're frequently not the same. Right? So you just need to worry about this. You generally want the manufacturer part number for the next part. Let's go look for another... I'm going to go click back here, and we're going to go... Um, to the top thing here. And we're going to go search for our microcontroller here. So, LPC175. So you only have to type in a, a, the first few characters to match, and then it will match the rest. So we're going to go search for that, and it's going to list a whole bunch of, how many did we get here? Only, they only have six of them here, okay? So these are the various LPC-175 processors. Okay. I, I, I have to know that because that's the part we're going to, processor we're going to be using for our, uh, the, the next class. Okay, so, so I'm deliberately doing this too. Um, I keep things going. So we'll, what we'll do here is uh, we went to 1754. And again, these are your data sheets. Uh, okay, you can see the pricing. Okay, they'll sell you one for eight twenty-five. Then you're like, maybe I don't want to spend eight twenty-five. Maybe I want to go find a, something a little cheaper. Now, sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. But uh, this is what DigiKey sells them for. So the next part of finding parts is you go to a chip finder. Now, I'm aware of two of them out there. There's probably more. I use findchips.com. Okay, and what you do is you type in the same thing. L, oops, slipped LPC175. And you go find. And it lists all the vendors that sell this part. Now, really critical on all of this is you need to check stock. It doesn't do you any good to go buy something that isn't in stock. Okay, now, uh, I happen to really want a 1754, so I'm going to narrow this search down a little more by going again 
and putting a 4 on there. Four. And these are the people that have them. So, uh, Arrow has them for about $5 a pop. And you, sometimes they have price breaks. Uh, you, you, you dig into their website. Newark has some at, uh, they're about six and a half bucks. Zero. And then stock zero. Oh, but they've got some for five, five fifty. But they only have 44. Now, and this is the, this is really the biggest message I want to give you folks is stock varies all the time. Check stock. Okay. Um, now some of these vendors are uh, not in the United States. They're in Europe. And so if you're European, that's a good thing. Uh, but if you're an American, you probably want to stick with the U U.S. stock. So always be checking out for uh, uh, where the, where the, the, the lo dealer is located. And then let's go look for this next one. Um, Future Electronics has some. And their price is, you know, about uh, $7. And who's next? Avnet, and they've got some in the Americas. They also have some in Asia. Notice that the Asia price is pretty nice, but that doesn't do you any good because we're in, we're in the America. So you can, as I said, I'm really trying to hammer home. You always want to check stock. Okay, if you see a pound sign in front of them, that means they're British. Um, British, uh, Element 14 is kind of this big distributor. Farnell is part of them. Newark is part of them. Uh, and they have distributors all over the world because electronics is that. So I don't want to uh, belabor this. What you do is you go look around for the cheapest price that you think you can deal with. Some of these vendors have minimums for minimum purchases, so you need to worry about that. Uh, so purchasing parts is not trivial, but at least you can find them. And these parts are reasonably in stock, although, you know, you'll notice they're not, they're not dripping with these things, you know. A hundred, you know, the only one that seems to really have a lot of them is this guy who is Avnet Express. They, they seem to have 1,400 of them. And then who, who's this one? Future has 8,000 of them. Uh, in general, uh, I tend to order from distributors that have stock a lot of them because they can run out, run out just like that. Okay. So that's, that's the thing to do. If you're designing a board, and you're not having a good luck finding the parts, you might want to find another chip, okay? And that, that's just the reality here. Now, this, this was fine chips. I just wanted equal opportunity here. Let's go to Octopart. Okay, do that one. And they can do the same thing. <coughs> okay. Um, they have a bit more denser displays, which I kind of like. Okay, so uh, so you can just quick, quickly scan down there, decide which one, which which of the various versions of it you want, and notice the availability. Now they do not all; these two sites do not have the same set of distributors, and this distributor set changes over time. The distributors have to pay to be listed on these sites. Okay. Um, so one, one site that I've, I've always liked, which is Jameco, they decided that they weren't going to do this anymore. Okay, so if I want to check, check parts with Jameco, that's what I do. So anyhow, this is, this is basically what I wanted to do with the uh, uh, finding chips thing. I want you to understand how to find chips when you're trying to design uh, a board because a, a parts availability is the, kind of the critical component to it all. So I'm going to sort of shut down right now on this. Okay, so saying bye-bye.